we have a hot LZ. Ancient Serpent 6, this is Trojan 2. The M16. In history and in cinema, this is one of the most famous weapons ever. In virtually all Vietnam War movies, the weapon has significant screen time. So much so, the weapon has become symbolic with late 20th century American foreign policy. Like America's involvement in the war, the M16 received a lot of criticism, particularly early on with its rapid deployment to frontline troops in the 1960s. The M16 initially made good impressions on the ground at Vietnam before America's full-scale involvement. Small units were testing the rifle during the advisor stage of the war. The gun was praised for its accuracy, particularly when firing in full auto. It was light, and so was the 5.56 intermediate ammunition. The gun was seemingly quite futuristic, particularly in its looks. Designer Eugene Stoner worked with lightweight materials, aluminum, plastics, and fiberglass from the aircraft industry when designing the M16, which evolved from the AR-10 and then AR-15, developed in 1956. At first, there were many skeptics of the AR-15, and it took years to gain traction. Colt purchased the AR-15 rights from Armalite in 1959 and helped promote the rifle, in January of 1963, Defense Secretary Robert McNamara concluded the AR-15 was superior to the M-14, which it would replace. America entered the Vietnam War in scale, March 8, 1965, and M-16 production surged. Colt could manufacture 44,000 M-16s a month. Troops would finish their basic training, often with M-14s, and be given M-16s on the front lines. Some Australian troops would also receive M16s when arriving in country. This rapid issuing of the rifle without proper training would become one major issue of many the rifle experienced early on in its life on the battlefields of Vietnam. As the gun began to see large-scale action, its faults quickly became apparent. Troops were told the rifle was self-cleaning and poor maintenance led to fouling and jams. Most soldiers were not even issued proper cleaning tools. The rifle lacked a chrome-plated chamber, making it susceptible to corrosion. Initial magazines were disposable and of extremely poor quality. Magazine springs were weak. 20-round magazines were often never loaded with more than 16 rounds. Rounds often became stuck in the magazines due to galvanic corrosion. Like you see in the movies, tapping magazines was a technique used in the real world to both seat the rounds and keep the rounds and spring from becoming stuck. 30-round magazines were developed for the M16 and used in the late 1960s. However, they never fully replaced 20-round magazines until the mid-1970s. They too took time to perfect. Spring and follower issues in the long, bent magazines made them less reliable. The biggest issue with the rifle was the ammunition, which was switched due to manufacturing issues in 1964. The new propellant for the ammunition was easier to mass produce and achieved the desired muzzle velocity of 1,000 meters a second, but it produced much more fouling in the gas tube. The powder further had a longer peak chamber pressure time, which threw off the entire timing of the rifle. Cartridge cases were not given enough time to contract before extraction causing jams. These issues were killing soldiers on the battlefield. When I got out to the uh, battle uh, forward area, there was a firefight with the VC. There were heavy concentrated fire from our side to the VC. There was 16s jamming a great deal. The men were putting up the best they could, but the 16 would keep jamming. They'd throw it down and try and grab another one. And another man would come by and pick this one up because his had also jammed. What was causing the jamming of the M16s, do you know? It seems that the ex excessive firing through the 16 will cause it to jam after a certain period of time. The Air Force was the first to mass adopt the M16 in 1964, with the Army following shortly thereafter. The Army would modify the rifle, adding the famous forward assist, which was to help the M16 if a cartridge failed to seat into the chamber. The forward assist helps push the bolt into battery. Because an M16 has an internal piston system, there is a lot of carbon fouling in the chamber, 
where the bolt carrier group rides. When this gets too dirty, the bolt may have a problem closing fully on its own. The forward assist feature helped, if used correctly, but it would be a combination of resolving many issues that would finally make the rifle a good firearm with the M16A1, standardized in 1967. Training and proper cleaning made a significant difference. Proper cleaning kits were introduced, including comic-style cleaning manuals. The chamber and bore were finally chrome-plated, and ammunition powder issues would be addressed. Comparing the M16 to the AK-47, the M16 was the more accurate weapon, particularly when being fired in fully automatic. The M16 was much lighter than a fully loaded AK-47, which with a 30-round magazine weighs 5.78 kilograms or 10.5 pounds. A Vietnam-era M16 was even lighter than its modern variants. Loaded with a 30-round magazine, an M16A1 weighs 3.6 kilograms or 7.9 pounds. The AK-47 was undoubtedly the more reliable weapon during the war. But did American soldiers ever opt to use the AK-47 over their M16s? This would have been a rare thing, but it did happen. Some special forces and long-range reconnaissance patrols did occasionally use AK-47s if they thought there was little chance of being resupplied and hoped to capture enemy ammunition. They may have further wanted to appear as friendly soldiers in enemy territory. In the movies, M16s are often represented by commercially available semi-automatic Colt AR-15 SP-1 rifles, with movie armorers converting them to fully automatic fire. Alternatively, movie studios have been able to purchase M16s formerly used by law enforcement agencies, which received them when M16s were phased out from active military duty. Most studios use any Vietnam War era M16s they can get their hands on and use them interchangeably. Many older war movies used expensive quality replicas of the M16 before airsoft versions were popular. The Model Gun Corporation of Japan made a high quality non-firing M16. They can be spotted by the fake forward assist. XM-16E1s were the first mass-produced variant of the M16 to get the forward assist in Vietnam. Real XM-16E1s are featured in the Green Berets from 1968, with the exception of one toy Maytel M16 Marauder used for dramatic effect, as it would have been much easier to smash. Or they wouldn't have left this. The toy gun industry was still highly popular during the 1960s, and there were a few toy versions of the M16 on the market. Wow, look at that. Hey, what about me? Try this one, partner. Looks like real. Sounds like real. They sure do. Some Vietnam War movies mock up M16A1s to resemble XM16s, you can tell an XM16E1 original by its lack of magazine fence on the lower receiver. Mockups usually just replace the M16A1's birdcage flash hider with an XM16E1's three-pronged flash hider. This three-pronged flash hider was done away with on the M16A1 as it caught on twigs and leaves. In 1969, the M16A1 officially became the U.S. military's standard service rifle. There were many versions of the M16 during the Vietnam War. Colt made a series of M16-based carbines used by American forces in Vietnam. These show up in platoon, but as similar commercially available Colt model 653Ps. The famous M203 was added to the M16 during the Vietnam War. This entered service in 1969. It would see limited use compared to the famous thump guns used during the war. But eventually, the underbarrel design would become commonplace for a whole host of modern assault rifles. Initially, the M16, or at least the bureaucracy that hampered the M16's proper use and development, got a lot of soldiers killed during the Vietnam War. However, many Americans who received proper training on the updated weapon swore by it. Vietnam War engagements were often what were called meeting engagements, units coming into unexpected contact with the enemy. 
In these situations, high volumes of automatic gunfire won battles, and the M16 was good at this. Its lightweight ammunition also meant American soldiers could comfortably carry a bandolier of at least seven 20 round magazines, meaning they were prepared for these engagements when they came. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. Just a little trivia to end the video. Did you know that the AR in AR 15 stands for assault rifle? Just kidding. Take care and have a nice rest of your day.